1850. Settlers arrive in the area of Big Elm Creek in northern Bell County. Chief among them are Robert Childers, son of Captain Goolsby Childers, early Bell County settler, and Lieutenant Horace Haldeman, U.S. Army post commander at Fort Gates, now turned rancher. 1854. A post office is set up and called Elm Creek. Robert Childers becomes first postmaster. Horace Haldeman operates a stagecoach stand. The little town begins to grow. Haldeman, a former army officer from Fort Gates now runs a 1,200-acre ranch here at Elm Creek, as well as being postmaster, and running the horse exchange. His hotel also boards many famous guests such as Sam Houston, Republic of Texas President and Texas Governor. Sul Ross, Texas Ranger and Governor, and recently liberated, though against her will, Cynthia Ann Parker, a Comanche captive, known to her people as Najwa. 1862. The Civil War begins. Horace Haldeman is offered a commission as colonel in the Union Army but refuses, embracing the Southern way of life. Joining the Confederacy, he becomes a major and is commander of the feared Haldeman's Battery, a mounted cannon artillery. 1863. While Haldeman is away at war, a Confederate deserter and local outlaw named Lige Bivens, steals one of his prize horses from his ranch. A vigilante posse pursues him, fills his body with bullets, and returns the horse back home, wounded but alive, with its blanket riddled with bullet holes. 1864. Elm Creek continues to be an exchange point on the Austin to Waco stage line. The Civil War has minimal impact on mail service and everyday life. 1865. War ends with Lee's surrender. Major Haldeman refuses to surrender, sinks his cannons in the Red River, and marches his men to his ranch at Elm Creek where he personally discharges them. He retires shortly thereafter. 1871. Robert Elliott of Kentucky moves to the Elm Creek area along with his family. Elliott and his sons soon take over the stage stop and hotel as well as many other ventures. 1872. Owen S. Carpenter, son-in-law of Robert Elliott, and his family also moved to the area, settling about two and one-half miles southeast of Elm Creek, on the Kings Branch Creek, a tributary of Big Elm. 1873. Mike and Asa Elliott, sons of Robert Elliott, set up a treadwheel gin at Elm Creek. They also help run the stage stand and hotel. The little town prospers. Meanwhile on King's Branch, Owen Carpenter has a new neighbor, J.Q. Thompson, a former teacher, who begins his farming career by acquiring 40 acres east of Carpenter's farm. 1874. Something is up with the mail service. Letters are being misdirected to Alum Creek, a town with a similar name, and vice versa. The problem begins to become very annoying. 1875. The mail situation reaches ahead. Tommy and Asa Elliott, along with J.Q. Thompson, write to the Postal Department for permission to change the town of Elm Creek's name. The request is granted. 1876. Elm Creek's name is officially changed to Troy, Texas reportedly for Troy, New York, a name suggested by a resident. 1878. Owen Carpenter deeds land on King's Branch to trustees J.Q. Thompson, J.H. Porter, and D.H. Smith for a school to be named the King's Branch Free School. Local men take wagon trains to Waco to bring back lumber and build a one-room, 16 by 20 schoolhouse. While rounding up cattle, Bob Curtis, a nephew of Owen Carpenter, meets a surveyor looking for a suitable route for the Missouri-Kansas-Texas Railroad. Bob suggests that his uncle Owen's farm near King's Branch might have less hills and gullies. 1882. Owen Carpenter gives the Missouri-Kansas-Texas Railroad a right of way through his King's Branch farm, he also provides land for a town site. 1882. That same year, the railroad comes through. A town begins to grow around the railway station, which would have been named Carpenter, but the name was already taken. The town's name remains in limbo. 1883. Up at Troy, residents begin to flock to the new railway town. Still, some stalwarts refuse to leave. 
Troy still has its own school with about 30 pupils. 1884. The new town has a post office, gin, mill, three saloons, hotel, and a co-op association, but still no official name. Meanwhile up at Troy, the decline continues. People begin to refer to the two towns as Old Troy, and New Troy. 1885. Old Troy is almost a ghost town. Once again, J.Q. Thompson and Tommy Elliott write the postal department and request that the new railroad town and post office take on the name of Troy. The request is granted. All mail will now start coming to Troy, Texas, mostly via the railroad. 1886. Troy is struck by a tornado. A store is destroyed and the schoolhouse that had been rebuilt and enlarged from the first one is heavily damaged. 1886. The citizens of Troy raise enough money with the help of the Masonic Fraternity and the Shiloh Grange, to build a six-room, two-story building. Both organizations reserved the right to hold meeting in one of the upstairs rooms. Soon after, by 1887, a warranty deed was certified, made by Mr. and Mrs. Owen Carpenter, which gave trustees J.Q. Thompson, Milton Bonner, and O.S. Carpenter, a 2.66 tract of land to be used exclusively for school purposes, or it, and all improvements would revert back to the benefactors, their heirs, or assigns. The school district is enlarged and becomes Troy Independent School District, number 64. 1887. The Troy Enterprise newspaper is founded. B. H. Simpson is the editor. 1888. Owen Sutherland Carpenter, early settler, and beloved benefactor of Troy, dies. 1890. Mr. and Mrs. J.Q. Thompson build a large two-story house up the hill from King's Branch, on their farm. 1891. Norris and Chatham Bottoms operate a gin in Troy, later moving five miles southeast and founding the Bottoms community. A. H. Curtis also operates a gin in Troy, remaining for almost 50 years and becoming one of the largest ginners in the county. 1894. Troy has a number of stores and businesses. J. Q. Thompson runs a gin out at Shiloh and also operates a store in Troy called, Spot Cash. 1895. Troy puts down an artesian well, touted as one of the finest in the county. 1900. The population of Troy reaches 500. 1902. The Maitjen Grain Company does a thriving business in Troy. Ernest and William Maitjen also run a bank known as the Citizens Exchange. 1903. Troy is the largest school district in the county. Even so, there is still a school out at Old Troy with some 60 pupils. 1912. The very inadequate two-story wooden school in Troy makes it necessary to vote bonds of $20,000 for a new three-story, brick building that was ready for its first students in September of 1912. P. L. Stone was the school's first superintendent. The school was unique as it had an elevator for a polio survivor, Miss Carlene Gunn. The elevator and ramps were built by Miss Gunn's father. Miss Gunn would go on to graduate from Troy and become one of the school's most beloved teachers. 1917. America enters World War I. Some Troy residents pay the ultimate price. 1918. An aeroplane makes a hard landing in Earl Thompson's oat field just to the northeast of the school and the pupils rush out to see it without permission. Superintendent S.W. Driggers spares not the rod to the ones who made it across the barbed wire fence, and issues 25 demerits to the students slow on foot. A very sore bottom was in store for one boy who refused to go in, locking his arms around Earl's back forge columns. 1923. A fire destroys the last remaining original frame building in downtown Troy. 1927. John Quincy Thompson, local settler and entrepreneur, dies. 1930. Old Troy becomes a ghost town. The school there closes and consolidates with Troy ISD number 64. 1931. The population of Troy goes down to 250, where it remained until the 1960s. 1938. Although the town's population declined, the school district continued to grow. 
smaller schools started to consolidate with Troy. Bottoms, or Childers CSD No. 16, and soon Bell Falls, by election. Many other smaller districts would soon follow suit. Santa Fe CSD No. 81, Williamson Branch CSD No. 95, and Cedar Creek CSD No. 6, came to Troy in 1949. Pendleton CSD No. 66 and Oenaville ISD waited until 1958. 1941. The Japanese attack Pearl Harbor, Hawaii, and the U.S. enters World War II. Troy resident J.C. Alston, survives the attack. 1950. Troy remains a quiet, bedroom community of the Temple area. 1952. Operator-assisted dialing ends in Troy with the arrival of the first dial telephones. 1954. The three-story school has become inadequate, and plans are made to build a new campus. A one-story, multi-classroom building is constructed and semi-circles the old school to the north, south and east. A large gymnasium had been previously built and is now the centerpiece of the school. The old building is torn down that same year. In 1955 the first class graduates from the new campus. 1960. Troy incorporates to become a city. Franklin Simmons is elected as first mayor, with Jack Dooley Sr., Monroe Watts, Robert McKee, Doyle Thompson and Frank Thompson elected as aldermen. Sidney Kayser is legal advisor and Ed Miller is city deputy. Also in 1960, longtime Troy resident and Troy's only physician, Dr. Ira D. Ellis retires. For the first time in over 50 years there is no doctor in Troy. 1964. The MKT, or KD Railroad ends passenger service south of Dallas. No longer will the Texas Special and KD Flyer be seen in Troy. By 1967, the Troy Depot had been torn down. 1976. United States Bicentennial celebrations are held in Troy. 1983. Craig McMurtry, a Troy native, is a pitcher for the Atlanta Braves. 1984. A new elementary school is built on Austin Street and named Troy Elementary. The high school and middle school remain at the old site. 1986. Troy holds its first Fun Fest, a three-day celebration in honor of the Texas sesquicentennial. Harold Ean early chaired the committee that planned the event. Music, cook-offs, a carnival and a street dance showcased the event, along with special speakers and a visit from Miss Texas 1985, Jonna Fitzgerald. 1988. The Troy Country Sun, a weekly newspaper, is founded. Harold Ean Early is the paper's publisher. The paper has its last issue in June of 2016. 1989. A new high school is opened on Old Waco Road. The junior high students will remain at the old site, which will be renamed Troy Middle School. 1990s. The school district begins to grow again, and soon becomes 3A. 2001. A second elementary school opens on West Main Street, taking the name of Edna Bigham Mays, in honor of the mother of Lee Mays, its benefactor. 2010. The rapidly growing school district now has a new middle school building, Raymond Mays Middle School, named for Lee Mays. The old middle school is abandoned with only the new gym and original football field being used. 2013. Troy prepares for a major interstate highway expansion requiring acquisitions of right-of-ways. Exits will change, the Troy overpass will become an underpass, and homes and businesses will be affected. Several homes are lost to the construction along with the Extra Co Bank, Exxon, and Big Red's gas convenience stations, Love's Truck Stop, the former Pitts Mechanic Garage, and the Methodist and Church of Christ buildings, which would be rebuilt and relocated. 2016. The old Troy Middle School building along with the old gym and cafeteria annex is demolished. The only thing remaining is the new gym, the old metal agriculture building, and the original football field. The property is retained by the school district. 2017. The fall construction deadline of I-35 expansion is missed, however it is coming to an end. Loves prepares to rebuild a little north of where they were before. The new underpass is equipped with lights and crossing signals. 
2019. With construction finished, life goes mostly back to normal. 2020. The COVID-19 coronavirus pandemic sweeps the country. Troy is affected with the shutting down of schools, churches and businesses. Some cases of the sickness are reported. On a lighter note, a major school bond initiative is passed, allowing for major improvements and expansion on all campuses. 2021. As pandemic restrictions ease, things are slowly getting back to normal. Optimism is high that a full sense of normalcy will be achieved by year's end.